Okay, we're back with Strictly Sickly, and today I have Allie on, and we're going to be talking about sex. Yeah! So. Hey, Allie! <laughs> Hi! Oh, so. so, Kristen was supposed to be on today, but uh, stuff happened. Yeah. So. She's not here. She's not sick, but life stuff. Yeah, life sucks. <laughs> so... Sex in a relationship, well, or out of a relationship. I don't know how kids are doing it these days. <laughs> well, I guess in our case, it's sex in a relationship yeah. with a chronically ill person. Because, but, you know, your sex drive is still there. It's just, you know. The pain drive is also there. Yes. <laughs> which can lead to resentment, which I guess is another episode, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's sort of the same there's all different types of resentment. <laughs> but that's definitely one of them. And I know there was a big drive a while back to uh, remind people that the handicapped also have sex. Like, yes. Because people tend to asexualize people in wheelchairs and mm -hmm. who need walking aids yeah. and such. Which I guess being chronically ill can be considered sort of the same line. I, I would... Yes and no. I mean, it's no. I I don't know how to classify that because it's not like you know. I mean, because not it's not everyone needs in, like an aid, like a chair yeah. or a walker or a cane or what have you. But there's still some limitations that apply to. Or then some people have feeding tubes and G tubes and G tubes yeah, or and drains ostomy and, bags. Yeah, or you know, but. The desire to be touched and loved and, you know, have some sort of physical intimacy is still there. And it is still important, you know. I mean, especially when you have, you know, a physical, like, a physical problem or um, an invisible illness or, you know, something that makes touch tricky. Yeah. And I think it's important because there's a lot of times you just don't feel sexy. You know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. After surgery, getting out of the hospital, you know, when I'm having a flare, mm -hmm. or uh, and I know with fibro that you have in the CRPS that I have, one of the hallmark symptoms is allodonia, which is pain to simple thing like wind on your skin. Yeah, or um, I think I think that's honestly probably one of my problems with the extreme cold or my yeah. extreme reaction to cold. Um. <clears throat> It just makes your skin overly sensitive. And in that case, people are not going to want to be touched or they're going to want to be touched in a different, like, either light touch hurts worse. Yeah. Or um, I painfully demonstrated on Zach one night what a poke feels like to me. And if I, I frogged him. And I'm like, when you poke me, that's what it feels like. And he's like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> it's like, why did you do that? So I was like, I just wanted you to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hard to show people. <laughs> Without um, physically abusing your partner. Yeah. <laughs> Which is okay if it's for science. It 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 was. It was totally it's for, for science. science. Not Yep, it was for science. Um <laughs> But and I know with endometriosis and PCOS that can make sex painful. Yes. So for a myriad of reasons. <laughs> and that's a big I know problem with a lot of couples is a lot of times the guy doesn't understand. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're okay one day and not the next, if it's not consistent. Yeah. Um, one, I, I want to say, yeah, no, one argument that Zach and I had over it was, um, I mean, in the beginning of our relationship, it was, we had, it was pretty frequent. Yeah. Um, but at the time, like I was still on my, I mean, I was still riding high. Like I was still, you know, I was still on my birth control. And then it wasn't long after that, that I lost my birth control. And then, um, because I wasn't on it, it caused, I mean, all the endometrial tissue had time to go haywire yeah. in my body. And so, you know, whenever I was trying to get all that under control and then after the Zolodex and everything like that, it's, it's become painful. And there were times even in the beginning where it was still kind of painful, but it was, you know, manageable, manageable. Yeah. But sometimes it's just not. Sometimes it feels like sandpaper or <laughs> like or you're very ripped up or a very unpleasant trip to the gynecologist. Yeah, where you're just being ripped apart. Or sometimes, I mean, there are times like I bleed after. Yeah. 
you know, and that's just, it, it makes it harder to want to do it because it's like, well, it's going to hurt and I'm going to bleed after and it's just going to be a mess. The and, bleeding has been a big problem for me since mm-hmm. the, the, the complete hysterectomy where they took my ovaries too. So I have no hormones. And they keep doing this thing where they take me off my hormones because they think the endo's back or I got a blood clot. So they took me off my hormones. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't been statically on them, I think, for more than a few months. Mm -hmm. And I feel better when I'm on them. But it takes probably a good two months for my sex drive to come back. And then by that time, they've taken them away again. Yeah. So much lube. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) Dude, and it was awkward at first because, like, I'm not a child. I've been married for... 13 years but it's still it was a hard conversation to have like yeah, it's not easy like it wasn't easy for me to because i think i think what kind of hurt zach the most was i never talked about it with him until we got into this big fight because we went so long without it and i finally just broke down i was like look sometimes it feels like it's just you're just ramming it in there and then like it just it just feels it just it hurts you know, and I know that he's not. I know that it's nothing. Today's episode <laughs> is not for children. Oh, yeah. We probably should have said that in the beginning. Uh, content warning. <laughs> Maybe content warning. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. Uh, <laughs> neither was I. I, j- I didn't sleep last night. Neither did you. No. <laughs> so today's episode might go a little off the rails. Cheers. <laughs> That's not liquor. That no, it's drinking. not. It's just Tampico. <laughs> it's so gross. I don't know how you people drink that. Mm, Tampico. I like Tampico. Ugh. Hey, hey cat. cat. It's so. Oh god, I hate lube. Like if it touches my hand, I freak out. I'm like, no, no. It is. Oh, I don't like it. Yeah, no. And sometimes even sometimes even with lube, it still hurts. It only lasts for like. Hmm. That's a good question. Is what is the best lube? I haven't found it yet. Yeah, I neither have I. It. Especially if you're using condoms, mm-hmm. because then you have to use like a water based. Yeah, lube. and um, I mean, shoot, even with uh, I mean, with birth control, that's an especial need because birth control has a tendency to dry you out naturally. And then you got to be careful because if you're using all this stuff, you're going to end up with a yeast infection, and that's going to be a bad day. Maybe we should just maybe abstinence is the key. <laughs> maybe, maybe abstinence abs- is the key. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but no, that even with two kids and a thirteen-year marriage, that doesn't work. Like that, it just causes issues. Yeah, like, um, especially with feeling connected. Uh-huh. I've noticed that it'll make you feel really like separate. Yeah, I mean, because even though like I'm a really touchy person and I'm. You know, real cuddly and everything like that. I think the biggest problem is sometimes, you know, Zach doesn't feel like, you know, he doesn't feel wanted. Even though, like, I'm constantly, like, you know, I hit on Cuddle me! Yeah, even though, like, I'm constantly, like, cuddling him every day. Or I'm, like, hitting on him every day. Or, you know, doing my version of flirting, which is, like, sticking my finger in his ear. Yeah, that's not flirting. I thought that was flirting. No, it's uh, infuriating, apparently. (laughs) Damn. What about Um, the belly button? If I I stick my finger in the belly button. He doesn't mind that as much as he does the finger in the ear, especially when he's driving. So (laughs) I like it, especially when they're driving. You lick your finger, you put it right in their ear. I know. And that means I want to sleep with you. That's what it means, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. That's, that's, oh, we might be confused with what flirting is. We might. <laughs> I didn't date very much before I got married, so. Oh, no. <laughs> like, and Steven <laughs> thinks it's cute to teach the children to lick suckers and then stick them to me. Because, you know, I have that. Yeah, you have that sticky problem. I have, I, it, it, which also, yeah, which, going back to the lube thing, lube gets sticky. Like, you know, which um, is probably your biggest problem. Yeah. With Stranger Girl? Yeah, well, we might need to... Hi. Uh, <laughs> if that gets any worse, we might need to... Uh... I'll deal with it. Um. Anyway, so if anyone has any questions or comments about sex, that's... Yeah, feel free. Let um, us know. Um, so... 
What is your big, like, what, okay, so, I mean, aside from, like, hormones and everything like that, do you ever have a mental block when it comes to sex? Like, oh, yeah. You know, because, yeah. Um, Because it's, uh, like, after I had Caitlin, uh, the first time we tried, it hurt so bad that I, like, for the next couple months, I was like, I mentally couldn't. Like, the doctor told me I was fine. I'm sure it would be fine. But mentally, I was like, no, it'll hurt. Can't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Or, like, sometimes, like, especially, like, after the Zolodex thing and because my body went through so many different hormonal changes, my body physically changed as well. And, like, things were sagging that weren't always saggy. Yeah. Uh, my stomach started sagging because I lost a lot of weight. And then, you know, everything else in between, like, I just wasn't feeling it, like. My so a lot of my confidence went away, you know, which it sucks. I had more confidence when I was more sick than after. The <laughs> yeah, I never had any confidence, so that's not so much a problem. But I do have days where I feel like I look like trash, so I don't want anyone touching me or looking at me. <laughs> so I hide in my room. Uh, see, like, I don't know, like, I've always been. I don't want to say I've always been confident. I've always, I mean, we all have our insecurities, stuff like that. But I've always been pretty, you know, confident about myself and my body and everything like that. But sometimes I'm just not, especially whenever I feel like garbage. And I went ahead and blocked that person on the uh, uh, the website because, I don't know, I like chatting with Stranger Girl on the sex episode with me out. So. Oh, okay. Uh, I've had too many incidents with creepers on Facebook lately. Gotcha. And generally, yeah, it, they say weird things like that. I don't know. I don't. I just wasn't going to take any chances that, that he was going to pick somebody up from the chat and start hitting yeah. on him. I don't know. Like, I just. Yeah. <laughs> it went over my head. I'm not taking any chances. Yeah. No, we're, we're a serious podcast. Yes. yes. About sticking our fingers in people's ears when we're flirting with them. And I'm having a hot flash right this second, and it is terrible. <laughs> and that's another thing. Is Do you ever get hot flashes I'll be in the middle? In the middle of something, and all of a sudden I'm having a hot flash, and I'm like, uh, well, I'm done now. I'm not. I'm not going to keep doing this because now I'm sweating to death. Do you ever role play as someone without chronic pain? I uh, may cry and pretend he's my massage therapist. <laughs> I. Uh, I need to do that. Okay, it's PT time. You're my sexy PT person. Now <laughs> but, go. But he actually makes you do PT. Yeah, except PT's painful. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I don't know. I've never done. I'm not. I've never done that. You're a role play someone without <laughs> chronic pain. I don't think that's possible. No, because like it's like I'm a normal human. I don't feel pain. I. Uh, uh, ow! Uh, ow! Uh, ow! <laughs> Except I can't walk across this room. Yeah. <laughs> I try to role play in my daily life as someone who can't feel pain, and it doesn't work out very well. Yeah. At home is where you're supposed to just let it all go. Yeah. You know, because especially, like, when I'm at work all day, you know, it's a lot for me to, like... I just do it for the butt rubs, then I fall asleep. <laughs> That's a great plan. That's a genius. That's what, like, uh, like, sometimes I'll have Zach rub my head, and then I'll fall asleep. And then it's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's awful. It is awful, but sometimes I just need a good head rub. Sometimes my head just really hurts. I don't know. I get it. <laughs> I have like a sinus infection coming on or something because my top row of teeth hurt. Oh. So yeah. I'm like, oh, this is going to be no fun. Yeah, this whole week I've been going through whatever and like it's just been so bad that even my teeth hurt. My hair hurts. My fingernails It's the hurt. most wonderful time of the year. Yes. So, of course, you know, when we're going to bed, Zach is all like, eh, eh. I'm like, no. My teeth hurt. <laughs> and then there's <laughs> the guilt. Yeah, there's a ton of guilt that comes with it. Because it's like, I, I want to do these things for you. Like, I'm not being a good significant other. I'm trash. I should yeah. do it because that's what I should do anyway. 
I feel mm-hmm. obligated, even though that person is in no way making me feel obligated. Yes, that's the important thing to uh, get across. It's like, it's not like our partners are really like, you know, we're lucky enough to have partners that like don't make us feel obligated to do it. Yeah. Um, no, I never <laughs> feel like pressured by anyone, like my significant other, but what, what are you doing? But I do understand the frustration. What? Hi, guys. <sighs> so... My mom keeps messaging me about y'all's uh, sex episode you're having in here. <laughs> sex episode. Sex episode. Sex episode. Sex- and sex- I kind of want to claw my fucking eyes out <laughs> right now. Um, but there's a few questions that aren't showing up in your feed. Oh, your mom wants to talk to us. <laughs> you're going to talk to us about what your mom wants to talk about sex. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up some topics real quick, and maybe y'all can address them. And then I'm going to I'm going to leave because I don't want to be a guest on this episode. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I've been checking in and out. Uh, Are you sure? I, I am positive. I just messaged my mom and said, do not message me anymore. <laughs> uh, so uh, back when y'all were talking about lube, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yes, I would love to know your mom's thoughts on lube. Uh, apparently it's messy and uh, some people have allergies to it. Oh. Um, uh, but the, the main thing that got brought up is, uh, definitely you guys should remember to talk about medications that, uh, affect that because like antidepressants, painkillers, different things like that cause like a lack of libido and they, and even if it doesn't make your libido go down, it's going to cause like performance I- problems, issues yeah. and stuff like that. Like not being able to. Finish. And yes. were you actually successfully able to block the creeper? Yes. Okay. Because I figured that's what that was. All right. I might have just blocked a perfectly nice person. Okay. But oh, I was about to say, is he a known creeper? Is that why you blocked I don't. That? I don't know. It's just, oh, you guys have extra messages that I wasn't even showing. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem is they're showing some in one feed and some in the yeah. other. Yeah, it's it's so weird. Um, so if but, we don't get to all your messages, sorry. It's, and, it's not, we're not ignoring you, I swear. The, the other thing you guys can do is if you message Strictly Sickly directly, they'll hit Sarah's phone. And yeah. so, and she's looking at her phone at the same time she's doing these. So if you message Strictly Sickly directly, she can maybe catch some of those if you don't think they're showing up in the feed. But uh, you guys should know that they have a producer. And, you know, if anybody's thinking about being a creeper just because there was sex in the title of this episode, I will find you. Well, and his next post creeper. after that was what? What is real orgasm? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, <laughs> so oh. I saw that one too. Anyway, so oh, um, I guess that's why I'm confused. Yeah, I didn't. Um, okay, yeah, no. it all makes sense because I went to like, go look at the page doing? and I was like, "Is there content on this page? Is something I check when someone randomly joins and there's not?" And it has all the hallmarks of someone who's going to. Be a troll or a creeper. Yeah, someone who's going to randomly message girls from So them. anyway, I'll stop crashing y'all's episode, but uh, definitely talk about uh, medications okay. and, and some of that stuff with there. And I'm blocking my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to hear about your mom's lube? Sorry, Julie, apparently. <laughs> no, I do have my phone. Oh, it's because last time we had an episode, I didn't have my phone on and a bunch of people messaged me and I missed it. Yeah. I wonder why that is. We've been having like issues with people being able to comment. It's happening on the other podcast too. So, but right. okay, <laughs> antidepressants. First off, yes, cause lack of libido, and I know for dudes, they cause unable to. I think they can make it unable to finish get it, get it up or finish. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Those are bits I don't have. So for, I don't know when I. I don't know. Like, I guess on that one, I didn't. When I was on antidepressants, I did, I never really had a problem. In fact, it kind of evened me out to the point where, you know, I think it depends on the antidepressant. I know, like the orgasm can be, yeah, a problem for a lot of people. And I know pain meds. I'm on pain meds. Oh yeah, those no, definitely pain meds kill definitely, that. Yeah, I. It doesn't really like kill my libido as much as I just can't. Yeah, it doesn't hurt my libido. It hurts the the ability. It makes it easier to, like, be able to have sex pain-free. Yeah. You know, because you're not feeling any pain. You feel great. You want to do things, but you just can't, you know. Yeah, pain meds can actually help your libido while harming your ability to perform. But uh, I see that as, like, I'm luckier as a girl. 
because that's not as much of a big deal. It's not as much of yeah. a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I find that guys get more embarrassed by stuff like that. Yeah. Because it's visible to everyone. Which yeah. has to be super just awkward. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's not that visible for a girl. But, yeah. I mean, I imagine the inability to, you know, finish is pretty embarrassing. I don't know. I don't know if it's embarrassing so much. It's probably frustrating. Um, I can tell you, okay, so speaking of embarrassing stories, um, and it goes back to the med thing, um, when (laughs) I was on Zolodex, uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna lay this out, and this is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me, so I'm sharing it with everyone, and you're happy, people. So, um, I actually, one of our first was on Zolodex before... Somewhere in between the mental stages and, you know, when my hormones were, I guess, going wild before they stopped, Mm -hmm. um, I had a particular incident where I became a squirter. That sounds terrifying. It is. It was terrifying. And that honestly made me never want to have sex again yeah <laughs> be out forever if that happened i know and like i remember when it happened i was like i was like oh god oh god what just happened i was just like i like coiled up into a ball i wanted to cry and i was like can we just burn the bed please just burn it burn it <laughs> like, um and i don't know it hasn't happened since it, it just happened when i was on the zolodex it happened a couple of more times like yeah i don't that would throw me dude i would um so like if that was normal for you it'd be one thing but for it to suddenly start like yeah it hasn't happened since either i'm not sure what my most embarrassing story is but i've noted that uh so my kids are getting older my daughter's 12 about to be 13 my son's seven about to be eight they've never walked in on me having sex which seems to be a horrifying story everyone my age ha- has is that time you walked in on your parents doing it and you tried to blind <laughs> yourself the next day my kids have never walked in on me but last time caitlin went to go knock on our door when it was closed instead of knocking she just said oh their door was closed ew and left I mean, at least she didn't. <laughs> because our doors never close. So, and we weren't doing anything. We were just talking. And I was like, oh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> she knows now. Well, she's, I mean, she's at that age. She has the internet. And that's a, <laughs> that's another topic that's a harder broach is for me, especially sex ed with her, because I have never had a normal working system. It's yeah. always been messed up. And she seems to be pretty normal. Like, yeah like how she's not having any symptoms that i did when i she's not having like i want to talk about in length her puberty stuff like that's 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 her business but she doesn't seem to be having the issues i had when i that would be an interesting case of like being chronically ill having to like talking to your daughter who's not who's fine for now yeah i mean seemingly normal i mean if she (laughs) the second she shows a symptom we're going to the doctor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, like, you know. Because one of the worst things that happened to all of us, me, you, and Chris, and all, is that no one knew anything was wrong. They just kept telling us, oh, that pain's normal. Oh, it's normal to bleed that heavy. Oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I told Caitlin, that's not normal. It's not. It's No, I mean, and um, the one thing uh, Zach and I agree on, particularly if we have a girl, is... Um, you know, as soon as she's able or as soon as, you know, um, I'm going to put her on birth control. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's something we talked about a lot, especially when we were talking about the HPV shot for our kids. Both mm-hmm. of them, because they do it for both. Yeah. Is uh, putting Caitlin birth control. And people had some really crappy comments about, like, people were concerned it would, like, it makes kids have sex. Okay, first of all. Anyone who says that has never been on birth control, because guess what? Birth control doesn't make you want to have sex. No. It's quite the opposite. That's that's how I thought it worked at first. I was like, oh, it's birth control because it makes you not want to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's that's how that works. I was just completely convinced that it was some marketing scheme to make people not want to have sex. Yeah. And um, I've changed birth control since... 
And different types of birth yeah. control do help. Like I had to switch at one point and I got on a better one. Mm-hmm. And it, it helped a lot. So mm-hmm. like antidepressants or like pain meds, that's something you kind of got to play with. If yeah. it's not working, try a new one. Mm-hmm. If that's not working, try another one. There's 8 billion of them. Because like uh, the after the Zolodex, um, my doctor put me on a birth control, like a three-month birth control. So I'd only have a period every three months, um, <clears throat> which... You know, I got laid off and then I couldn't afford it. So they put me back on the birth control I was on before the Zolodex. And that actually um, helped my. Oh, Allie sex says drive. she can't get Savannah's dad to agree to let her go on it. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard conversation. Luckily, Steven's like real, like, he knows what goes on. He's, mm-hmm. uh, uh, he was a teenage boy. And even if Caitlin's not interested in boys right this second, which she seemingly is not. Um, and she tells me a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure if she'd tell me everything. Like, I'm not naive. No, yeah. She's gonna lie. Well, she still wants her privacy. Yeah. You know, she still wants her private life. Which I want to afford her. That's why I don't ask too many prying questions. But I know she recently broke up with her last little middle school, uh, you know, dating partner. How they date by, uh, sending each other emojis now is... They like they talked on the phone too, but like they never hung out in person uh, except that one time that I was in the hospital. <laughs> I was in the hospital, and my daughter was like, "This is a good time to ask if I can go on a date," because she knew I would say no. She knew that would be the end of it. Or okay, but I'm sitting behind you in the movie theater, and just putting a cardboard box in between the two of you. But no, Stephen just dropped her off like a big idiot, and you're watching Stephen. <laughs> and then he they informed me afterwards i was like i'm not actually that mad it's just kind of funny nah. that she knew which parent would be the sucker yeah i mean even all that aside she's a good kid she's not she's gonna like be she's not gonna do anything to you know embarrass herself or you in public oh well, i mean she is but, but she's not doing she's not She's not doing anything under our notes. She's not She's not hiding anything yet. And I figure mm-hmm. that day will come because oh yeah, that day came with my parents where I didn't want them to know anything about me. Yeah, and I mean, and that's actually normal, um, particularly whenever it comes to sex, whenever it comes to... And I let her go, shame on me. <laughs> 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 no, it's okay. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's natural. I mean, we all, I mean, shoot, like... <sighs> Teenagers want to hide. So I mean, they want to have their own life. And one of the things is I, I had a hard time when I was younger is my parents didn't want me to do that. Like they would read notes I'd written. They would. And I know they were trying to protect me. But a lot of that was very frustrating for me and led to some later issues in life with privacy. Mm-hmm. Where like if people touched my stuff, I would go insane. And then it turned into the opposite where I just have no private life and everyone knows everything. Which is where I am now. Do you think that's part of the reason why, like, us, like, being, you know, because we are millennials, I guess, like, but, you know, do you think that's why we have such a hard time with people touching our phones? I don't know, but it drives me nuts. Like, if I, <laughs> if I show someone a picture and they start goddamn scrolling through my phone, first off, you don't know what you're going to see. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to go see. I was going through one of my mom's cameras once, and I found a picture I didn't want to see. Mm-hmm. And that was a little plastic phone. And you know people take naked pictures on their phone. Don't scroll. Don't scroll, it's rude. I showed you a picture, don't scroll. That also brings me to another thing. Um, chronic illness and sexting. And naked pictures. Because sometimes it's hard, you know, especially like if you're having a bad I'm day. I'm going to take a picture of my butt. Wait, I can't bend my arm. <laughs> it's like, I can't move. <laughs> like, you know, like I can't move my body over this way to do it, you know. Or trying to be cutesy on the phone when I feel bad and like mm-hmm. hitting on it's just not. Yeah, I no patience. I haven't done well because I I I don't do that because of the Facebook thing. That yeah, happened. that's another embarrassing story that I find hysterical. <laughs> so Allie <coughs> had a picture on her, but it wasn't even a bad picture. Like it wasn't a naked picture. No, it wasn't. But it was, uh, I guess. You know, at least in my... It was a sexy picture. It was a sexy picture that I was sending to a guy I was kind of sort of seeing at the time. 
And she posted it to Facebook. I didn't post it. <laughs> I, first of all, I don't know how it got there because I deleted it as soon as I sent it. But I, we were, oh yeah, it was after the tornado in Alvarado. And I was trying to post picture, damaged pictures. Uh huh. And you accidentally sent your sexy picture to Facebook. And we and then it would not come We couldn't off. delete it. I had to shut down. I had to run home and shut down her entire Facebook. I locked her Facebook so no one could see it until we got off. Like, I shut it down to private yeah, completely. Like, it would not, for some reason, I don't know if it was like a problem with my phone. Because I remember... Well, a tornado the, had just hit, so I'm pretty sure everything was all messed up. Yeah, because I deleted that photo. But for some reason, when I sent the tornado picture... There's my boobs. I'm like, no. <laughs> you were wearing a bra. Like, you weren't yeah, I was wearing it a bra. Wasn't. It was just, you know, it was. At least it could have been worse. So. It could have been worse. So I don't. And check who you're sending to before you send texts. Because I recently, luckily, it wasn't a bad text, but accidentally cross sent a message. And I'm glad I wasn't, like, talking smack about somebody or saying <laughs> something gross. Because that would have been bad. So, I mean, and that's not just, you know, for, you know chronic illness that's 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 a good role for everyone but yeah i wanted to kind of touch like i mean since we're talking about like you know feeling sexy and being but that's a good way to flirt if you have a chronic illness like i mean if you're having a hard time with the words or just the action you know if you know like just a small thing to kind of i guess kind of make yourself feel sexy as well as your partner feel wanted um granted i haven't done that (laughs) I mean, it's a good idea. And if Zach is watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mostly, I'm really lucky because Stephen, before I had the hysterectomy, did a bunch of research online. Yeah. And he came to me with these things and was like, these are the things that are going to happen. And I was like, well, that's horrifying. Maybe yeah. I don't want to do this. But things were so bad that, yeah, like there was no option. So, yeah. And I mean,. <laughs> You're going to have hot flashes. You're not going to have a sex drive. You're randomly going to want to scream at people. You're probably going to cry at commercials. Uh, it's going to be like puberty, only backwards. You're going to get acne. You're, it's bad. It's. I wish bad. I could say the crying thing was a holdover from the Zolodex, but no, that's just that's just how I've always you been. you just sort of always been a crier. <laughs> I've just always been a crier. Like, I was watching the Dumbo trailer the other day. Dude. And I started bawling. I watched that. Like, I was trying to, because uh, I saw an article on it on Facebook, so I was like, I'm going to go watch that. And I sat through it, and I was like, that wasn't that bad, but I watched a different trailer. So I watched the right one, and I was like, oh, no. They took his mom, Dumbo's mom. Have you, have you, have you seen the It's been so all? long since I've seen the original cartoon. Oh my god, cartoon. that scene! Oh my god, that scene uh, where like he goes and he finds his mom, and then she like puts her trunk uh, through the it's thing. It's just like, freaking brutal, dude. And what was it when I was pregnant with Andrew? It was the movie Elf. <laughs> the movie with Will Ferrell, Elf, made me ball. I don't know what. And there was a commercial for a while with just babies sleeping and it saying joy to the world. And I just couldn't watch that commercial. I just cry because I was pregnant and that's what it does to you. The like, what is it? The Bush commercial? It's one with the Clydesdales. Oh, yeah. The Clydesdales and the puppy. I can't do it. I can't even I can't even talk about it because I'll cry. (laughs) Because it's that one, and it's just the one, it's the one where the puppy kept running away to go hang out with I, the Clydesdale, and then he moved, and, he, and then he ran away, and he oh was no. lost, and then the wolves it's came. It's okay. The no, stop now, came. stop now. But it's okay, because the Clydesdale Sesame saved Street when Mr. Hooper died, Brad says. I, I don't, I never watched Sesame Street. I've never seen a single episode of Sesame Street. It's a horrible episode. What's worse is uh, the Muppet show, uh, or was it the Muppets, or was it Sesame Street after Jim Henson died? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I say, well, I was watching articles on, like, horrible moments that have happened in kids' shows. And it's like the Rugrats where Chucky has the episode on Mother's Day because he doesn't have a mom. And it was, it was pretty... Um, just set up the sex color wheel. Place it on the appropriate color for the day to let those interested know. Green, good to go. Yellow is maybe if you are awesome. Red, just go take care of yourself. The I mean, in- yeah, that would be great if it didn't change so often throughout yeah. the day. The end of the first Tinkerbell movie where she put the music box on Wendy's window. I was pregnant with Charles and Bald Money. <laughs> what is it about being pregnant that makes stupid things or like having your hormones screwed up that makes stupid things just yeah, sob worthy? Like, I'm not even pregnant, Mm-mm. but like uh, Lilo and Stitch made me cry. Okay, well, that's that's worthy of it. Lilo and Stitch is a good movie. It's about Ohana. <laughs> Ohana means family. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> or um, what is the weirdest? 
Okay, since we're on the subject of just, you know, hormones making you cry, what is the weirdest thing that has ever... I mean, what's... The weirdest thing, either the movie Elf or the first time one of my children was in one of those stupid school plays. The stupid school plays. You know, the ones we go to where they just sing around. They're idiots. They can't dance. They can't sing. They just they stand up there like idiots. <laughs> and I'm bawling in the aisles. Just, that's my kid. And I wasn't pregnant. So... <laughs> uh, Hormones are a strange thing, man. Lots I've, of stupid stuff has made me cry. And I'm not a crier, so it's weird when it happens. And it's always something just off the mark, like Elf. <laughs> or a commercial that makes no sense. And I, I don't know what my problem For is. For me, it's always animals. and um, Or old people. And if you want to cry, you watch... Uh, or you read uh, Where the Red Fern Grows. That, that'll kill you. That, Never again. Dude, That's that book... What was I reading the other day? It was Hatchet, the one where he gets in the plane and like crash lands in the Canadian wilderness. Hatchet made you cry? No, it didn't, but I was oh. just talking about children's books. It, it upset me because it was sad because, you know, he ends up out there for like eight months and almost dies like three times, but, you know, fictional stories. Yeah. It never really affected me. Like, I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. I don't know. Uh, when I was a kid, the other side of the mountain made me cry because I wanted to go live like that. Like, I cried because I wanted to live in a tree in the woods, which is really weird, I guess. Most kids don't want to live in a tree in the woods. Big Mouth recently made me cry. Big Mouth. Big Mouth made okay, me so I love cry. this show, Big Mouth. If, if you haven't seen it, like, okay, it's a little over the top with its humor, but, like, it's the best sex ed I've ever seen. Yeah, no, it's pretty brutally accurate. It is better than the sex ed my daughter got in school, which was, don't have sex. I believe her uh, sex ed was called It Can Wait. Yes. It Can Wait. But no, it can't. They're 16 and they're they're good to go. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. I mean... If we go to an antique store and see something that was in my grandmother's house, I cry every time. Um, that... that I'm, I'm, well, my grandma's still alive, but if she's ever not, that's the end of my life. Because, yeah, we're real close. Yeah. But, yeah, no, Big Mouth is... Yeah, I watched, like, have you watched the new season? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's all about body positivity and the episode on Planned Parenthood was that really good. That one was good. excellent. Um, it's, it's, I wouldn't really recommend it for kids. Like, if they weren't my kids, I wouldn't let them watch it. I'd recommend it for older kids. Yeah. It's like maybe like 14, 15. It is brutal. And it's open. brutally, it's very honest. I like, it's like the shame wizard. But that first scene with the girl hormone monster, and she's like, you want to cut up your t-shirts while listening to Lana Del Rey on repeat? You want to shop with lip lipstick? You want to nice. you want to scream at your mother and then laugh at her tears? I was like, it's so accurate. It is. It is. Um, but recently they did an episode on the depre uh, with the depression kitty. Yeah. And I was like, it was, that made me cry. I don't know. The, the depression, depression kitty was pretty sad. Yeah, the depression kitty. I was just like, ugh. Or when, um, I don't want to be too spoilery, but with, with Jesse's dad. Yeah, that's that was upsetting. Like, I felt bad during that whole episode. I, know. I was like, so, this isn't funny anymore, cartoon. Yeah, get back with the funny. And it's then, like that episode of Futurama with the dog Yeah, that and none then, of us can watch. And then, you know, Jesse finally deciding, you know, she, she needed therapy and being, you know, kind of making a mature decision. And but like that depression kitty, man. But it's a show about a bunch of 13 year olds, if you haven't watched it, that are going through puberty and it shows everything. And they have these hormone monsters that like follow them around, making them do stuff I'm like, yeah, that's that's how that works. Yeah. No, I mean, exactly. Especially like with, you know, because uh, I would every so often I would look over at Zach and be like. Is that what that's like? <laughs> you know, and like sex, like yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it's like. You know, yeah, because the boys on that show are nasty. Like they're gross. They are very gross. And my son is an innocent baby and will never behave like that. No, no, he is a good boy. That Futurama episode makes me crazy. Yeah, I can't watch yeah, that no, dog no, episode. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. We're not even talk about it. No, but we back to Big Mouth. Yeah, no, I, I like <laughs> I like the first season better. Like for comedy but the second season was actually more like taught stuff it's weird and i was i'm in this group called sex ed failed me on facebook 
And it's a bunch of people. That's a real thing. Yeah, it's a bunch of people's stupid stories about how they didn't get proper ex- sex ed, so they did stupid stuff like people putting icy hot on their junk or cutting habanero peppers, and then they touched their junk. Do you think uh, proper? Um, if we got proper sex education, maybe we could have realized sooner that something was wrong. Uh, yeah, I don't think just proper sex ed, but when some when these are when things aren't right. Mm -hmm. If your periods are this heavy, that's not normal. If this level of pain is happening, that's not normal. And stuff for boys, too, because I'm sure they have problems I don't even know about that they can get. Like epididymitis is one with a swelling that they I didn't know that was a thing until I was an adult. Like, I was like, what the hell is that? What's an epididymis? I don't... Is that a thing? I don't know. What part of the body is that? Is, Does it hang below the balls? I, like, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, they're... They're so tight-lipped about it here. Like, I don't know what it's like in northern states, I guess, where it's not in the Bible Belt. But here, all we got was abstinence. That's all I got in high school. Well, apparently, they have um, fairly okay sex education, and they uh, learned more about the Civil War than we did. Oh, yeah. That's a totally State different. Subject. That's Sorry, totally different. That's joking. a totally different subject that the, um, we can't even yeah, delve into right now. We're not a political show. It's horrible. <laughs> it hurts so bad. Oh yeah, epididymitis. Because I know a guy that has chronic epididymitis. It keeps coming back and uh, oh. it makes him miserable. But well, and because he, he freaked out because oh, there's a lump. Like oh shit, go to the doctor, dude. You're gonna lose a nad. That's not good. And then it turned out it was something benign. Like well, not totally benign, but not something that was gonna you know wreck him. It's like not gonna. Good. It's not gonna. But guys Lance get, Armstrong. I'm, I was thinking Louis Armstrong. That's a totally different cat, man. But guys get real wiggy when it uh uh it has something to do with their junk. How to hide awkward boners one hundred and one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you ever feel like guys are more sensitive about? their what's going on with their bodies than girls are i think when it comes to the juncular area they're very much more sensitive you think it, i i don't know i've often like it's like always think about it and i know thinking about it in retrospect is not good but like i always think about like things you know if things were different could i have intervened sooner with my own mm. body and would i be i this think guys way? are jumpier because people don't sit around telling them it's normal if blood's coming out of their junk people are gonna panic yeah, but that's normal for us. So what's not normal? It's harder to define a line with girls. For a boy, if you have a lump, if there's stuff coming out that shouldn't be coming out, or if you're if there's not stuff coming out when you're trying to make stuff come out, not okay. If you're trying to pee and you can't pee, you probably have a bladder infection. If you have some sort of leakage, you probably need to get STD checked. If you have a lump in your testicles, you definitely need to go to the doctor. For us, it's like Oh, all these things could happen and they're normal. I didn't realize until like right this moment how much of a mystery the male area is to me. (laughs) (laughs) I should probably have done some research before (laughs) this show, but I was tired. I know. know, um, We're both just tired and rambling. Well, they they do more about girl, like genitalia, like the inside parts is better taught than male. Mm -hmm. Like prostate, vast difference. Like that's not taught very well whereas ovaries and uterus are easy fallopian tube cervix like that's it's four things dudes have like a lot going on in there i don't know i need a book yeah that we, was like, we need a picture book i know just like point to things just like. Uh-huh. <laughs> but i think it's harder to tell when girls have something going wrong but i think we're also less apt to think something's going wrong because things go wrong all the time yeah i don't know i just i'm always stuck in like a retrospective loop with what could have been done different and i guess nothing really could have you know or is your mom messaging you again no somebody told me you'll need a penis expert oh, we said we don't know anything about boy junk uh-huh. you're a penis expert what's a vast difference <clears throat> one's an itty one's an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's i don't think we found a penis expert i think that's how our sex education went Ones and anyone's and uh, yeah. don't do it. They don't. don't do it. They uh they take the guys off into a separate room and we watch a video about girls and boys and sperm. And yeah, they took us off to the side. They gave us a bag with deodorant, tampons, yeah. and shampoo for some reason because we were all smelly. So oh, yeah. we yeah. had sex ed and we watched this uh this whole video about you know sex ed or whatever. 
and I can tell you how uninformed that video is because we came out of there and we the girls came out of their room pieces. and they had the bag of uh, stuff and we had no idea what the stuff was. Well, why do they get a bag of stuff? Um, they taught us. They taught us nothing about our junk. Well, and did you have any actual? So, oh, having worked in an OBGYN office, it is an unbelievable amount of ignorance a lot of women have about their bodies because they were never educated. It's really sad. <laughs> I mean, I've had uh, doctors Google PCOS in front of my face. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so. But did y'all get any actual no, sex it, 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 Yeah, that's really the only reason I came back in a crash is um, uh, I don't know how much sex ed you guys got. I know, I know it's, it's like startlingly low, but it's even worse for guys. Like, it, it's, it's a big joke that, oh, guys don't know anything about, you know, how the women reproductive system works or whatever, but it's really because we are basically given no real information. There's like a little diagram. We know we're like, okay, there's a moose head sperm goes in, gets an egg. And once a month, bitches be crazy. That's, that's really all we know. We know your hormones got out of control or whatever. And I'm more educated than the average guy, <laughs> average guy, I mean, you know, for my class or whatever. And I really didn't know jack crap till I got older. But they tell the guys nothing. Like, you know, they're like, okay, you can get an STD. This is kind of what herpes are. Blah, 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 blah. But they don't, like, you were talking about epididymitis. We don't know what that is until one it of a, until we get it. And it's really common. And so every dude, like, that's over the age of 28 to 30, has had a bacteria, and that's a what that is for anybody to know. That's a bacterial infection in your uh, sperm. Well, ducts you can also have whatever. it where it's just a swelling, where it's uh, yeah, yeah, idiopathic. But, that's the guy I know with the chronic type. It's it's just a yeah, random. It's idiot, mostly idiot, caused by bacteria, swelling. and ironically, my phone's about to die. So you're ironically, it's me. like one of the few that you do get from like a toilet seat. You, you always hear the joke like, "Oh, I might have got it from." A I'm toilet not sure seat. that's true. So we no, it, it is actually true. Um. It's oh, you can get crabs pretty easy. That's I don't know, but I yeah. just put that one song cause in my head. <laughs> but uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't teach us anything Bless about you. that. <laughs> the big thing is uh, testicular cancer. Check for lungs, but no, but nobody's doing that. And, well, and yeah, that. guys, dudes guys are do, dudes need to do testicular exams like girls do breast exams. I thought you said those were useless. Well, there's been studies that have shown that girls actually. Um, there's, there's conflicting studies. There's studies that show that the results you find with self-breast exams are alarmist because oftentimes you have lumps naturally. Right. Yeah. And then you didn't know they were there. But it's just then, the difference between feeling for natural lumps and like a hard. But then there is a lot of cases of breast cancer where it was caught by the person. So I've been reading a lot of conflicting, conflicting medical studies about that. But I would still think do them. Like, they, what's just, the worst that's going to happen? They don't, well, they don't teach guys I anything. mean, you know, if anything, it's actually kind of calming. Just do it. Just, and you if know, you're a dude, your you need to check your, you need to check your band Basically, parts. they tell us if it burns when you pee, you should probably go to the doctor. Uh, but you should probably wait like three days because sometimes that just happens. Which is not true. No, nah, that's not true. It should never burn when you pee. That's, that's guy education, though. Just I so know, you Sometimes, know. like, I mean... It, and we're told that any problem that a woman's having, women just, like, have weird problems during that time of the month. Like, we assume if blood's coming out, that there's, like, nothing worse that could be going on. So when you're like, oh, you know, my hormones are like, well, you know, you're bleeding out of your vagina, so. Okay, good to know. That, that's, that's pretty much sex education. They're like, hey, the, the women are going to be nuts, like, at some point during the month. Don't get them pregnant. <laughs> Don't get them pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we literally only had abstinence, so we never got condoms yeah. or birth we control. Didn't, yeah, we didn't get condoms or anything like that. We yeah, got pictures of they, STDs. Yeah, they they talked about it briefly, we, but we, mostly we did have a uh, we did have a lady come in and show us how to put on a condom on a banana, mm. and she was awkwardly attractive, so we didn't know how to deal with it. We were just... Do you think they did that on purpose? I, dude, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we had Sue Johansson too, like growing up. And oh Love man, Line. I loved Sue Johansson. What do they have now? Like, is that still a thing, or is it all moved over big to the mouth. internet? Big mouth. <laughs> they have big mouth. All I knew is I was traumatized for a week after our sex ed class because I was just really confused about everything in general. 
I mean, they they touched on it in our sex ed, but more than anything, they really drove home the abstinence. Um, they drove it home. Um, they actually had a guy from a church come and do our sex ed. Yeah. Oh, that sounds helpful. Yeah, they had a That's they had a minister surprising. do. Uh, in yeah. Cle- I say it was Cleburne back in the in the '90s, the late '90s, the early 2000s. So they had a minister come in and do our the largest portion of our sex ed. And what he did is he came in. And he was like, "Say abstinence," and he was like, "Oh, if you feel awkward, then you probably shouldn't be having sex." Like, oh, Jesus, dude. Like, what is you're like? What is your logic? You're a teenager. This? There's no getting around feeling awkward. I'm, I'm 14. I'm always awkward. Just it was it was horrifying. I'm and 36, and I feel weird just sitting here. <laughs> And at school, they had the purity ring thing where they they were wrangling thirteen year old girls into it. And I'm like, I'm thirteen. I'm like, I can't make a decision. Like, like I haven't even hit yeah, purity. No. I, I hadn't even hit purity at thirteen. I was like, I can't make a decision. I refuse. Puberty, me. Yeah, I I refuse to sign it, and that caused trouble. So, <laughs> well, the studies actually show that if you sign one of those abstinence pledges, you're actually setting yourself up for teen pregnancy. They the high the rate with teen pregnancy is actually like crazy high in the purity community. No, yeah, because it's forbidden. So, so did y'all have any actual questions about male stuff? We were just confused about where all the parts were. Yeah, down there, (laughs) below the belly button. We need an actual expert. Yeah. Well, we were talking about problems that we had that we felt maybe with comprehensive sex education could be prevented. You know, and we were discussing that we didn't actually know a lot about men's genitalia. I think uh, unwanted pregnancies and spreading of STDs, I think such a better sex education would definitely help with that. Um, But we were talking about chronic illness. Yeah, especially because, like, I mean, if we learned, like, I mean, because they did tell us about, like, I mean, we did learn about our periods and this, that, and the other, but I don't necessarily recall them saying, hey, you know, you, you know, like they did touch on, you know, cramps are normal. Yeah, but, but they I never, never said if it hurts to this level or if you bleed more, if you're having to change a tampon or a pad out every other hour. But when when were the first PCOS and endometriosis and all that diagnosis? Because I, oh, I feel way like... Way long ago. That's, that's really, an old... Really? Yeah. Okay, because like, like PCOS yeah. is something I didn't know about until... I was an adult after I was divorced and I met you guys. And it's something my ex-wife had. She didn't She didn't know about it either um, is the thing. On <laughs> average, uh, with PCOS and endometriosis, on average, a woman isn't diagnosed till she's 27. And it's usually after, like, what, seven doctors? Something like that. Yeah. Because I know I wasn't diagnosed till after I had a kid. And just through normal, I never sought out seeing a doctor because i always thought it was normal yeah no i mean uh i didn't until uh you and i never been to an ob or gyno till i until i got pregnant i had never seen a doctor yeah. like that and i had been um i had been to a gyno uh once um before i was an adult and then i started having problems but like i would go to these doctors and they would just be like uh well i mean everything's normal you're just you know you bleed more than usual or they would put me on like i remember i was on the nuva ring for a while yeah and um you know like they they it wasn't until i was living with you and you were going through all this stuff and you were it was after you were diagnosed with pcos Mm -hmm. that and then you convinced me to go get myself checked for pcos and sure enough i mean i had it and i i must have had it for a really long time before it was diagnosed I mean, and yeah. I, I think it's it's got to be more. It's so weird that in my lifetime, like I've met so many people with PCOS well, and like didn't even know it. It's really common. Until, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. super common. If it, it's that common, then it does need to be taught in sex ed class. And I, one of the things I wish they would have talked to the guys about was like low testosterone because I know it 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 averages out like in your 30s or whatever, you know, if you're going to get it. But there's uh there's people that get it real early because they have something wrong with. Then you know where they're not producing enough testosterone and things like that, but they they don't talk about any of the chronic illnesses that guys can get. You know, as a result of that, I, I know it's less than what. Well, maybe it's, it's less pretty than, common in it's, in yeah. our generation and dudes after thirty because of the way we live. Settling down and having a family actually lowers your testosterone. Oh, I yeah. was gonna say it's in the milk. It's in the milk. The, it's milk, in the milk hormones. It's the milk hormones. It's in the vaccines. <laughs> it's in the- <laughs> and I'm gonna have another hot flash because people are talking about hormones. It's <laughs> wonderful. I want my ovaries back. 
Plus, they didn't diagnose me until I went in for a hysterectomy and they found it. Yeah, I wasn't, I mean, hell, it was like another two years before I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Um, because they went in and they found it, I guess, by accident. <laughs> yeah. Get it from your parents beating your ass or your mom yelling at you. Sex ed, is that what he's talking about? Do you guys feel like if you would have known about the like what the symptoms were for it and you would have got checked out and diagnosed earlier that it would have helped you yeah. at all to this point? Like you'd be in better shape than you are now? Yeah. I actually think I would, yeah. Which is um, factually accurate. What would they have what would they have done different than or I mean, how would it how would it have helped you put you on birth control birth control halts the can, Sooner, yeah so. it can now that doesn't work in all cases but you have a better chance of finding something that could treat it putting you on metformin for pcos or something else so you don't gain a bunch of weight yeah hey, Nina. um because that's one of the symptoms of pcos that usually doesn't kick in until you're in your later teens is the weight gain I think so, I think one of the I think a huge problem is the way birth control is looked at is you, you have too many of People that see it as like some kind of moral issue mm -hmm. or whatever, instead of just a medication. Like, every, yeah. oh, it's just, I mean, it's just so you don't make babies while you're out there fornicating with all the yeah, fornicators. That's, and it's, that's not the only use for birth control, first off. And second off, if people are out there fornicating, it's probably not any of your damn business anyway. I Unless remember you have birth control. Well, I remember like in, I mean, and I'm just going to kind of have to get half political here. Um, when Trump was elected and everybody was worried about, you know, what was going to happen with Roe versus Wade, what was going to happen with birth control. I was freaking out for a minute because I'm like, oh, shit, what am I going to do without birth control? And, you know, I was upset because... It was said to me, I'm not going to say who said it, but it was said to me, he's like, there's more important things than not worrying about getting pregnant. And I'm like, that is not why I take it. Well, that's, I've gotten in arguments <laughs> with people because I'm like, I don't take it to not get pregnant. Like I, I took it so that I could get pregnant without birth control. I never would have had my son. It's what regulated my system enough well, for on, me to be able to conceive. On the other level, you want to put Caitlin on it. Yeah. Because... Well, first off, it's... I don't uh, want her getting pregnant. You don't want her getting pregnant. It's a smart move. And she's at really high risk for having a lot of the same issues you have. Yeah. Yeah. But has that not caused some family arguments it's, about that? Most yeah. people in my family are really okay with it. But they have had some comments that have kind of thrown right. me. Like, don't tell you, don't tell her what you're giving her. Mm -hmm. And that, and I don't... Well, first that's off, not that's okay. dangerous. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because she could... It, like, if she starts having blood clot symptoms, like, birth control can cause blood clots. Yeah, and she won't... Uh, she, she won't, won't know. know. And uh, it would confuse her hormones, and then she wouldn't know if she had taken something that would cancel out the birth control. Like, or not only that, like, it would also... Like, because there are... I mean, at least the first few weeks you're on it, you don't feel very good. And um, I know this is totally off... Subject: Does anyone take fluoxetine, Seroquel, or Lorazepam? I have taken Seroquel and Lorazepam in the past. Those are for sleep, aren't they? Well, no, they're antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I've taken Seroquel for sleep and for depression, and I've taken Lorazepam for anxiety. I've never taken either. I've, I think the only Lorazepam on... is Valium. Oh, okay, then yes. Yeah, oh. Lorazepam is Valium. Oh, then yes, I have taken it. Yeah, that's just the, <laughs> that's just the generic term for okay. Valium. Yeah, they're all just different. Mood. Those will, and that's actually not off subject because those uh, medications will affect your sex, uh, drive. sex drive, yeah, sex drive, and other things. Like I take Lexapro, and it it affects things, definitely. So, but um, yeah, I was on Zoloft for a really long time, and that affected things. Mm. I I never really like. I wish I had something to contribute to that. I just I haven't. <laughs> After it all, when the kids may grow with ADD, PTSD. Yeah. So here's the other thing. It's such an embarrassing topic that, uh, and, and it's because of the way we raise everybody too. Like better sex ed and being more open about it and not stigmatizing sex would make it so people could actually talk to medical professionals about it easier to get answers. Because um, the thing was, like when I first started antidepressants and I was having like downstairs problems because of it. Like that's not something you want to go talk to your doctor about like oh is there anything that, you know you're like oh they're just gonna throw viagra at me or something like that mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily the case they're gonna change in like meter doses and stuff and so if you yeah. are if you are having pro like if you're taking antidepressants and like you're out there wondering hey is there something i can do that's you know where i really yeah go tell your doctor about it and they will uh 
it, they can like change your dosage a little bit. Or like, and Mina asked if they make you gain weight, and I know for a fact that Seroquel will. I don't know, like Valium, I, not so much, but Seroquel will, and I'm not sure about Flexidine. I don't know. I got pretty lucky because the Celexa, um, it was one of those like first try was the charm. Because I tried eleven different antidepressants before yeah. I landed on one that helps. And I had given up for years, but after the hysterectomy, I had to do something. Yeah. Because. No, I understand. <laughs> yeah, my hormones were so out of whack, I couldn't cope. Like, I had to do something. So I went back and luckily, Zoloft was the one I had not tried yet. Yeah. Because I had tried everything from Paxil to Prozac and everything in between. And it none of them work. They all caused either horrible symptoms I couldn't deal with or they just didn't help. It's. <sighs> It's based on your brain chemistry. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like I like I was on a really low dose of Celexa, but for some, it was the it worked like a charm. Like I mean, I started sleeping. I started being coherent again. I started <laughs> having PCOS and endometriosis, and being on any of these meds will also add to the weight gain because yes. that already messes with your ability oh yeah, because PCOS. Shut down. I mean, yeah. How will THC help your ADD or PTSD? I don't know. They're doing some studies on kids with ADHD and uh, uh, crap. What? It's not THC. Uh, the other ingredient. CBD. 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 That's the one. THC helps with my anxiety, but other people it makes paranoid. So it's, yeah, it's, it's it, re- it really depends on the person. I always feel like. I will exit y'all's episode now. I've crashed it long enough. <laughs> okay. I want to get off my Seroquel, but it, if I get off it, I won't sleep for it. Yeah, that's the one I took for sleep. Unfortunately, it didn't help me. They tried Trazodone and Seroquel or two that I tried for sleep. But um, you might want to talk to them about a different med or maybe make sure that's the one that's making you gain. Like, talk to your doctor about it because I'm no doctor. I just know that their Seroquel is, I'm pretty sure, one that can make you gain weight. Yeah. Lots of antidepressants can. I don't know. I was not i didn't pay attention to my weight gain or loss while i was on it i was suffering from weight yeah say for sure the meds made me gain yeah and i recently went to the ob and they did a full panel on me and everything came back fine except for my thyroid was completely out of whack which i want to retest on but uh thyroid problems can affect sex drive oh absolutely there's another one you know i mean it's just I gained over 100 pounds. I don't know, dude. That's... Yeah, I talked to the doctor about that. Yeah. If you're still doing everything else pretty normal... And you're gaining weight, that that sounds like something you definitely need to talk because to Because I gained about. a I gained a ton of weight after I had Andrew, like 120 pounds. After yeah, I had you did. Andrew. You, I mean, like I don't want to like down. No, you, you, you ballooned. Fast. Yeah, like, you ballooned over up. the course of a year. I added like 120 pounds, and it was because I was breastfeeding. And I didn't know that breastfeeding can uh, make uh, PCOS symptoms worse. So it was making my uh, insulin resistance worse. Because mm. I was constantly craving sugary things. Not like a normal person craves it, but like a junkie three days into. Uh-huh. No, absolutely. I, yeah, yeah, because we would be sitting there like eating like chocolate covered bananas all the time or just candy and chocolate. And yeah. Yeah, no, I, that was, that was bad. I gained so much weight and I got on the scale one day. I was just like, I don't know what's going on here, but this can't continue. <laughs> I'm going to be 400 pounds. Cause I remember I went to go take a bath one day. Here's an embarrassing story. <laughs> and I got stuck for about a minute. Uh... And I was like, the fire department's going to have to come. They're going to have to break down the wall. They're going to have to pull me out of here with a crane and it's going to be bad. And I was stuck, like I had my arms to the side, and they'd stuck. And I finally, like the water level got up, and I wiggled out, and I was like, "Oh God!" My life flashed before my eyes, and that's when I was like, "I need to lose weight." Yeah, I had a moment like that when I was three hundred pounds. Um, it wasn't a fun day. No. Um, you know, and it's, you know, and that, and I honestly, like, I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack. You know, like I was having like episodes of really high blood pressure, which also made me like heart. It's hard to feel sexy when you feel like it's like, oh, I could have a heart attack at any minute, you know. And oddly yeah. enough, though, I felt better when I was that big. I'm not sure what it threw off hormonally because I know uh, fat stores estrogen. Mm-hmm. So if you for say my mom had a hysterectomy, but then a few years later she had a gastric bypass and lost over 100 pounds. And that released estrogen back into her system, which I thought was really interesting. 
So losing a bunch of weight can actually throw a bunch of estrogen into your system and make things off. I was going to say, yeah, that might also make a lot of sense. Like why um, when Zach and I started dating, one reason like why my sex drive was as high as it was was because uh, I lost 50 pounds. Yeah. I went from being 300 to 250. And that'll throw hormones back into your system. Yeah. And, uh, I know for a fact that being off the hormones makes me gain weight mm-hmm. like crazy. They'll put me back on the hormones. I'll drop 20 pounds over the course of a couple months. They put me back. They take them back off and I gain it right back. See, and I I don't know. Like, I noticed I have the opposite problem. Like, whenever I wasn't on birth control and when I wasn't, when I was on the Zolidex as well, I noticed that's when I lose the weight. And I don't know if it's because my testosterone is up and... I felt sexier when I was fat. I feel healthier now, but all this extra... Yeah, I I don't like the extra skin, and I just... I just don't feel as good. I feel tired all the time, and I lost weight because... I you have, got real sick, yeah. Yeah, I have gastroparesis where my body doesn't digest food, so I didn't lose it in the right way. I didn't lose it in a healthy way. Yeah. It wasn't from diet. It was from me dying, so... Well, yeah, uh, some of my weight... Like, uh, a lot of my weight loss that I had was when I was on Zolodex... And, um, I, uh, what should I call it? I, um, I couldn't hold anything down except for half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich a day. And I wasn't sleeping either. And so, like, I was just up all the time, not eating, not sleeping, and just, like, wired. And I didn't start eating again until they put me on the antidepressant. When I remember, I got desperate at one point and tried a diet pill Mm -hmm. that was actually really, it was formerly uh, one of the ingredients in FinFin, the one you see all the, uh, you used to see all the infomercials about, like uh, the commercials where it's lawsuits for blah, blah, blah. The doctor put me on a a pretty hardcore diet pill when I gained all that weight and it just made me feel crapped out. Like Mm -hmm. I did lose weight, but it was still not in the right way because I was just starving. Like I wasn't hungry ever. It's like being on an ADHD medication. Mm -hmm. Now, Caitlin doesn't have that side effect when she she was on Concerta. Like she was always hungry. Mm -hmm. But I noted that uh, Stephen Young's brother, um, he would basically starve until he went off his med. And then he would like when it, it. ended the day when it was rolling out of his system he would eat everything yeah i um, uh, i was a lot like that um i was on a uh, ritalin when i was younger and i just i would sit there and i just i wouldn't eat mm-hmm. i wouldn't do anything really and then um whenever i was off the meds i ate everything I and mean, i'm glad that's one of the side effects i was watching for really hard and caitlin was i don't want her to be a zombie mm-hmm. i don't want her to starve and that's why I really like the lowest. Do- and she's not on it anymore. I didn't. I wasn't real comfortable with putting her on it in the first place. Not that she didn't need it. She had a very valid case for needing to be medicated. Oh, yeah. A lot of people do. And that's another, I, I think, episode that we need to do is uh, freaking medications is people sometimes need to be on them. And there's such a stigma with like antidepressants and anxiety meds and pain meds. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're on them that you should be getting off them because something's wrong with having to take them. Yeah. And if you're depressed, like, okay, so sometimes I'm depressed because my life sucks and I'm poor and I'm sick. Sometimes I'm depressed when everything's going right because my brain chemicals are fucked off. Mm -hmm. And that's when pills can help. Oh, yeah. They're not going to help me out of my poverty or my chronic pain. Now, they do make me better able to cope with the pain. Yes, and really, that's what it's about. It's not supposed to make things better. It's not supposed to, like, put rose... It's not a pair of rose I wish glasses. there was a... I wish there was a pill like that. Yeah. I, I wish mean, that absolutely. existed. Absolutely. But, I mean, hell... I'd be chewing it, like, mad. But... I mean, hell, even weed... You know, like, weed's not a pair of rose-tinted glasses. For a lot of people, it just helps people, like, cope better, you know, with their lives. Yeah, I wish I, I... I don't have very much experience with it just because I've never been a fan. I mean, I can tell you, like, right now, like, I mean, I I do... Mentally, I'm, I know I'm in a better spot, you know, because I... And I don't know if it's because, like, I, I feel like I'm able to slow my brain down enough to handle everything. Being through you've ever been through for sleep. What is a good medication for sleep? I have a prescription or I will be up for days. Y'all have any suggestions? No, Amien. Yeah, I can't take Amien. It makes me really messed up. What was that weird one we took? Lunesta. Oh, that made everything taste disgusting. Oh, God. I threw up for two days because of the taste <laughs> that put in my mouth. Mm-hmm. I am on um, Restoril, which is it's a kind of partner drug to um, 
the tamaz lorazepam. Sorry, it's tamazepam I'm on. So it's the same family of drugs that Valium is in, but it's specifically for sleep, and that's Restoril or um, Tamazepam. And I'm also on a muscle relaxer, Tizanidine, or Xanaflex is the brand name. And if I take those two together, mm-hmm. I can sometimes sleep. Sometimes I still can't. I have never found a sleep med that actually works for me. Ambien never made me sleep. I would just be high and up all night. Ambien never made me sleep, no matter what dose I took. Lunesta never helped. None of the name brand kind of meds they're throwing out for sleep. I've tried every over-the-counter med and every mixture you can think of. Probably coming real close to overdosing a few times just because I'm five days into not being able to sleep and I'm going crazy. Mm. Because without meds, I don't sleep. Yeah. I'll be up for a week before I finally crash. And I'll start. I'll get a headache. I'll get sick. It makes me sick. See, I'll go through periods like that, but... I mean, it's always if I'm not on meds and for a while I got immune to everything. Sometimes you just get immune to everything you're on. And in that case, you just kind of got to suck it up and be awake for a few days until those meds are going to work again. Because you get like, like people get refractory or like where pain meds won't work for them. They've got to go up in dose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sleep meds do the same thing. The doctor also did me on Tizanidine in the hospital, so I refuse it. Yeah. It's just, it's a really strong muscle relaxer. Like, if I get up after having it, it makes me dizzy. Like, I passed out once, which I'm pretty sure is from the Tizanidine. But it also, if I don't take it before I sleep, my hand locks up. Mm. Like, I have to, for some reason, it makes a fist and I can't unlock it. So, I'm actually not on that technically for sleep, but it does help me sleep. I've put on loads of weight uh, weight since the stroke with the meds I'm on. I'm lucky if I get two hours of sleep. Jesus. Oh, yeah, I imagine. That sucks. But stroke's pretty hardcore. I mean, with the blood clot, I'm lucky that's not where I ended up. But. No, I mean, you, you're very fortunate. And, I mean, we talk about all these meds we've been on, the birth control and stuff, but they do have side effects. Oh, yeah. Like, especially if you smoke while you're on birth control. You're really prone to blood clots, <clears throat> Allie. Um, yeah, and they're unfun. They're not fun. Blood clots hurt. That is the most miserable I've ever been in my entire life. And I've been plenty levels of miserable. That was, you don't want one of those. My vegan diet's going to save me. Your vegan diet's going <laughs> to save me? Is that, is that going to fix it? No. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but definitely, I just... I do think comprehensive sex ed would fix a lot of these problems. Absolutely. Um, God, you know, because I wish, I wish like hell, I would have recognized that nothing was okay when I was younger. I really recognized I was able if, I really wish I would have been able, better able to talk to my mom about it. Because I remember begging her. Shit, my mom was an L&D nurse for 15 years when I was a kid. And I still wouldn't talk to her about it. And I, I begged my mom to put me on birth control. And she thought, you know, she's like, well, I'm not going to give you permission to have sex. I'm like, it's not for that. I am bleeding so heavy that I hurt all the time. I am tired all the time. I just want to sleep. And, you know, and I was upset. And then, of course, you know, whenever I did finally become, she put me, I was on the patch when I was 17. Because I was, you know, she only did that because I was sexually active. She didn't do it, you know, even though, like, I had begged her to help. Dude, you told your mom you were sexually active? That is a long story that came out of some, that's a long story. Okay, I was going to say, kids, dude, (laughs) my mom pretty much walked in on me with a dude and just plugged her ears and just walked out of the room. Like, she was not having it. I could not tell her I was sexually, she was not listening There was, she thinks I was a virgin until I got knocked up and it was an immaculate conception because I wasn't married. Yeah. Um, She was not hearing that I was sexually active. Like I was, I was trying to do all the flags without actually telling her and she was not hearing it. Yeah. It's a long, it's, I I mean, it's really not that long of a story. It's a private story, but um, yeah, no, she finally put me on the patch after that. Well, at least she got on the birth control, but now the patch there. Yeah, it didn't last very long because, you know, then I moved out. Well, and it's crazy and then, all the stuff you hear now about all the meds you used to be on, like all the lawsuits with the patch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I was on Zofran or Finnergan both when I was pregnant with uh, Caitlin. And now they're saying that causes birth defects. 
So I'm like, well, dodged a bullet there. I mean, it's scary, especially if you're taking a med that's in like the first seven years of development or Mm -hmm. seven to 12 where that first patent is and only one company can make it. Yeah. Before they start doing wider arrays of studies. So you have to be careful with the newer birth control. Like, Yaz came out. A bunch of girls got on yeah, it. Yeah, that's what um, almost killed my sister. Yeah. Uh, that was what caused, I believe, and my sister, I think, was part. She either filed to be part of that lawsuit or something like that. I don't really remember the whole story. But it was when she was so sick and they thought she had pneumonia. And then they went and did an extra on her lungs. And turns out her lungs were so full of blood clots. That she was only functioning on 25% of one lung. Yeah. So. And then they like pulled Yaz and changed the chemistry up behind it. But the, you never know when you try a med like mm-hmm. what it's going to cause. So you should always be monitored by a doctor when starting a new med. That's, I mean, it seems ridiculous, especially if you don't have insurance or if you have insurance like mine where I pay $100 per visit until my deductible's met. It's mm-hmm. hard to go every month. Oh, yeah. But you kind of have to. Because they need to know if something's going on. They yeah. need to do blood tests. I mean, tests. yeah, I was about to say, they're still, even though it's been a year, they're still doing, uh, Abigail's like still doing blood tests on the, on post solidex Yeah. You know, to make sure I'm still where I need to be. And that's, the, the doctors really need to monitor it. And I mean, and they need to know the sex stuff too. Yeah, I know. I because, told them I'm talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I because <laughs> I talked to the doctor about it, and they they kind of played around with putting me on a cream or a suppository, but that was expensive because it had to be compounded. So I didn't end up ever doing anything yeah. about that. Just and then I just went and begged for my hormones back. Yeah, I had a hard time talking to him about sex stuff. Yeah, it's especially because I chose to see a male mm-hmm. a gynecologist. Um, and it's, you know, it's an older dude and he's, he's really funny. He's really, I really like him. No. And he's pretty frank and yeah. I do appreciate that, but it was very embarrassing cause he's almost like a fatherly figure. figure. Yeah. It's, you it's know, bad. it's bad. It's so like, as I remember whenever I started the Zolodex and everything like that, it was the, it was the appointment Zach went with me and it was the one where, you know, we're both like, Hey, uh, she needs to be on, um, antidepressants and this, that, and the other, and it was also, you know, the same one, you know, because I had read that, like, you know, when Zach and I, like, I wanted to be sure because I had read whenever I was studying up on Zolodex that, you know, um, A, we needed to be using a condom because getting pregnant while on the Zolodex can happen still. And also, um, you know, it would mess everything. You know, it it would hurt everything. And the Zolodex, for people who are watching that aren't don't know, is a chemo type agent that yeah, shuts down your system, basically. Yeah, it's basically like a really, really super hormonal treatment. Um, they use it in some types of breast cancer, the and hormone prostate base. cancer. Yeah, yeah, and it 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 throws you into menopause. Yeah, but I mean, it it was so weird, and so like I had read that um, in. And I don't know, like, I didn't follow it up, but I wasn't going to take any chances that, you know, some of the medicine might affect him if we, you know. Because well, I know you can get like an estrogen or testosterone cream you can use. Mm-hmm. And they actually mentioned a testosterone cream to me last time I was in the office. But then they said, do you have kids? Because if mm-hmm. they touch it, yeah. if they come in contact with it, it can do yeah. stuff to them. So I was afraid, you know, I had read that maybe it, it would affect him if we, you know, so it's like, eh, better be safe than sorry, man. Yeah. Like, I, I'd rather, you know, and, um, but finally we talked to him. It was just so hard to talk to him about it that Zach ended up doing all the talking. And I'm like, I've never had this problem before. Like, but, you know, um, you know, cause Zach even mentioned like, you know, oral persuasions. Thing, what was with all the angry face response? I think that's when we were talking about sex ed that those popped up and the lack of. Yeah, I I think so. I don't know. Um, or maybe, I don't know. So also, we've kind of been all over the place. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, but yeah, that was really embarrassing. I don't like talking about sex with my doctor. And I know <sighs> I have to do it this round again. And I don't want to, and especially because he's going to want to know why I'm not knocked up yet. <laughs> yeah he does he asks questions very bluntly like that why aren't you pregnant yet well man <laughs> he asked that about andrew i was like well dude i've been trying i don't know 
It seems like a problem you need to fix now. I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying for two years. Yeah. You figure it out. So, but this one should be my last uh, blood work, yeah. I think. I don't know. It's been a year, you would think, but. I don't know. I mean, stuff's in your system for a pretty long, especially something like that. Mm-hmm. can throw things out of whack for a really long time. Yeah, because I still haven't felt the same. And that's really, and I think that's another thing that's kind of really interrupted our sex life is I just, I don't feel the same way I did before. I don't know. Can't talk to the doctor. Can you manage to do it to everyone on the internet? <laughs> that's yeah. different. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> it is. It's totally different. Like, I could talk to the internet about my squirting incident, but I can't talk to um, the, doctor. the doctor about it at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could. No, I can't look at him in the face. I would die of pain embarrassment. But, I mean, and it's so weird because it's like, it's not like he's never seen it. It's not like he's never been... He's had me cut open on the table. I mean, that's another thing you need to know. Your doctor really has seen everything. You're not walking in there with an STD they haven't seen. You're not walking in there with a sex problem they haven't seen. Like, even with all the crazy medical shit I've had, there's some doctor out there who's seen it. Yeah, but for some reason, it's just still, like, icky. I don't know. (laughs) Well, and that's Caitlin asked for sure that she wanted to go to a female doctor for that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, for... For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's females that work in Abacare's office, and I, I'd yeah. really like her to go up there because I trust them. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I'm worried about the day that he retires because I don't yeah. want to have to look for another because he's pretty awesome and he's been there through everything and he's not allowed to leave. And the doctor that, like, delivered my kids, like, I don't trust him anymore because I went, first off, he missed the PCOS and endo and told me just to suck it up. I was being a baby. Mm. Second off, I you can get a yeast infection in your breasts from thrush if your baby yeah. has thrush. He told me that was physically impossible and said it was just something else. Even though we watched it happen. Yeah. And I, I like, like, I'm like, but Google told me this is a thing. He's like, well, yeah, but Google's not a doctor. Finally, I went to another doctor and they're like, yeah, that's what you have. I was like, I, I know my last doctor was an idiot and I let him deliver my babies. <laughs> And I went through another doctor before I found Abacare. That another one that just said, "Hey, suck it up. You, you yeah, have nothing wrong with before, you." Yeah. Before, before him, I had Doctor Manhands at Harris. Um, I don't remember his name. I just remember he had really big hands. Yeah, Irwin was the one I saw before yeah. Abacare, and he had really big hands, and I didn't like his fucking attitude. Yeah, no, he, yeah, maybe he was the same guy. I don't know. But, I don't know, but yeah. he he was the one who basically was like, well, you know, you just, some women just have bad periods, you know, sometimes it's worse than others, you know, it's just, you just have really heavy periods, it could be, you know, then he, it's like throughout, like, it could be fibroids, it'll pass, I'm like. But fibroids don't just pass usually like that. I know, and so I was like, so that's what made me go find another doctor, I was like, you have a license. Yeah. Somehow. Like, and specifically for the lady parts. I know. And I'm like, you are a dangerous human being. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are. <laughs> and that's, that's what we need on our pages, at like a registry of doctors that are dangerous human beings, because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that are just going to sit there and let you die. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Like, I was like, uh, you... So, like, I mean, what was your thesis to pass school? I mean, yeah, you, like, what? How did you do that? Like, uh, why are you a doctor right now? I mean, did you just, you know, I know girl parts. There you go, doctorate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how they're getting them. But I don't it's either, scary. especially, but yeah, and especially, it's horrifying. Whenever I have to see them, Google my own conditions back at me like now I, i'm used to them googling crps well crps yes that i believe but if they're googling pcos that's this is no good yeah no i it's terrifying or like uh because i remember it was i think it was my gallbladder surgery and you know i told them i was on metformin for pcos and they wouldn't believe me they're like she's diabetic i'm like oh, oh yeah, they always think i'm diabetic. i know i always like, end up getting blood sugars i know and i'm like trust me it's low it's my blood sugar sits surprisingly low yeah my blood sugar's amazing and they kept the last time i was at the hospital for the blood clots they're like your blood sugar is amazing it's like i'm not diabetic and they come back in the room and do it again your blood sugar is amazing i'm not freaking diabetic stop it stop poking me and of course my blood sugar is good i'm not diabetic not yet mm-hmm. maybe one day because i have pcos 
but not right now. Yeah. No, I, it's just, <sighs> but we need it. Honestly, I feel better with a female doctor because they seem more open to discuss things. My male doctor seems more embarrassed than I am. I think of us, all of us talking about our issues and different experiences help more than doctors. We are better doctors than them. Yeah, I don't know. I've always had a hard time with female doctors. I think because the ones I've had had a poor bedside manner. Um, I've only had like one or two that had a pretty poor bedside manner. And I think it's the same one uh, you and I both had. Um, I don't know, but uh, I, I get frustrated with the doctors with crappy bedside manners. Yeah. I just, it's like, dude, just, you know, mm. could, uh, could could you maybe warm up a little bit? Could you maybe like, you know. Yeah, some doctors don't have time for patients. That's the thing I hate, like, going to see my GP, like, I sit in the office for like five hours for you and waiting for him. And he's in there for five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah, that's <sighs> annoying. I'm like, no, you come back in here. I get my time. But then you know that's what's making him late. And, of course, he's the only Medicaid doctor. I'm not on Medicaid, but I just like the doctor. But he's the only Medicaid doctor for, yeah, like, so 19 his, counties. Yeah, and so, like, his office is busy. It's insane. At least it tells us these experiences are more common than we might have been educated about and helps us to address the issues. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, and, I would love to set up some, like, some sort of registry. Almost, like, this sounds kind of tacky, almost like the sex offender registry, but of doctors who, like, just big red dots of don't go there yeah. because they will blow you off. Or they obviously don't know anything about the female body. Like that doctor with Chris, I don't know anything about female business like okay then you don't need to be a doctor you need a new career or you need to go like be a foot doctor or something you don't need to be a fucking ER doctor go to sports medicine yeah do like, something, do something specific. specific yeah like it's just you know and i understand it's not easy like but come on man like being a doctor i know is a hard ass job but d- you know, it could, especially an ER doctor where they're dealing with the whole body, mm-hmm. like where it's not very specific or a general surgeon. Yeah, where a lot of times people don't understand what's going on. That's why they're at the ER. They don't know how. You and know. I get it's rough, but they have to be more on the ball than any other doctor. Mm-hmm. And there's no leeway. Yeah. And it's just they have to be held to a higher standard. They just do. Absolutely. Like I would actually like if the doctor that Googled my PCOS um was an er doctor i'd probably be less hard on them yeah because i mean they see so much shit every day but you know all my er doctors have been really well versed on cysts like ovarian cysts not pcos specifically but cysts popping because i guess that's something they see a lot is girls in there with cysts Dude, that that yeah especially the first time it happens you don't know what's going on you just know that you're dying that's so all you know <laughs> almost, all, almost all women when like the first time that happens if they don't know what's going on they seek some sort of medical care if mm-hmm. it's because you almost always grow a cyst anytime you release an egg. Mm-hmm. It's natural to grow a cyst. The problem but with PCOS is they don't ever go away, so they just they grow just on stack. top, on top, on top, on top. Yeah. So for some women, it's not as painful like if it's just one. But when it's the bubble wrap phenomenon that we got going, it's super bad. Like when you sneeze the wrong way and everything, yeah. just you, you're going to die. Or reach up. Yeah. That's the thing I did that one time that just flat on my ass. Just blinding pain. I thought my appendix had exploded. ER and trauma is where the rock stars should be. They have to find answers in fast because of ER to me. Yeah, that's that's where you need the best doctors, and that's where a lot of times I see the worst doctors. I think they shunt them to ER, and I think they also get burned out really fast. Oh, I can see that. Oh, I know from working with them, like at JPS when I was volunteering there and when I was doing my rotations there, like it it burns you out. ER is, it'll make you crazy. They really should have some sort of mandatory rotation. Like, you can only do ER for four years, and then you have to rotate to med surge or for, mm-hmm. like, something else. Because they they just stop caring. They see junkies, they see drug seekers, and they just don't care anymore. And I, you know, have some time, I don't blame them. Yeah, and I think that's part of what helped, like, I mean, particularly, like, in your case and in my case, what helped our stuff fly under the radar for so long. Um, my endo was growing on my colon for years. Cleaving our found it in the x-ray and told me I had cancer, but it ended up being endo. My colon rectals, doctor sent her some surgery because it was so bad. And odd, he did it for free. Well, that's good. Th- I mean, Abicare did my, uh, tubal knowing I couldn't pay because my insurance wouldn't pay. Yeah. Some, some doctors are really good. 
JPS is a great trauma unit, but the admin is... Yeah, I, Harris is the opposite. I am not a fan of Harris. I am a big fan of JPS because I work there and I saw how they function. If you have a trauma, mm -hmm. that's where you need to be. But if you're just sick, probably JPS is not the ER to go to. Mm -hmm. Probably, if, if you're just low-level sick, find one of the satellite ERs. But... The problem with that too is if you're if you think you're low level sick, if you go in like you, I thought I had an upper respiratory issue with that blood clot, and then suddenly I've got a blood clot. You're going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You're not staying at that little ER. You're gonna get transported. Mm -hmm. I mean, they even had to transport me from Hewley and Burleson for my arm because they didn't have uh, the hand surgeon was like looked at my hand and was like, nope, not dealing with that. Another yeah. hospital for you. If he didn't do it, I would have had to have a colostomy bag. Well, I'm glad he did it. Yeah, because it's crap that they missed it for so many years, especially with it growing in such a place. I know. Like and you've known you've had issues for years. Like like I know you well enough to know that you've known things have been going wrong in your body for a while now. And I hate that they just blow it. Up. I hate it. It's yeah, it it it's maddening. And we really need to wrap up, but... Yeah, we've just kind of rambled for about an hour and a half. But I do believe, is it next weekend, are we going to do um, some, like, is that the, the beauty tips? Yeah. We're going to do an episode for how to maybe feel better about yourself. Self-care. Yeah, self-care, just self-love, self, you know, because... Allie's going to handle beauty tips. Yeah. I'm not, because... No, because you're going to be my guinea pig. Yeah, and so. uh, I'm bad at self-care. Like, if I'm having a flare, just mail me some dry shampoo and baby wipes, because that's... And for and you know what? For some people, that's enough. Like, I mean, shoot. Like, I, I just do it because, like, it makes me... I can't control the pain that I'm in, but I can control my face. Yeah. So... Which I get. I do, I do get it. I do get Like, I, I, it took me a long time to get, like, why yeah. people do the things they do to look pretty or, like, because they like yeah, it. Yeah, for me, it's, well, I genuinely love it. And it was something that I wasn't going to miss out just because I feel like garbage. Like, it's like, look, it's the one thing I have. It's the one thing I love to do. I will find a way around it. And I can't, like I said, it's a control thing. Like, if I can't control the pain that I'm in, at least I can control the face. And that is the logic we will be using on the <laughs> next episode of Strictly Sickly. So thanks, everybody, for joining in. And always, like, if you've got extra questions or you just want to tell us something, you can message us. Uh, uh, you can message us. We also now have a, dis a discussion group that you can add yourself to. Yeah, feel free. Um, and then you can post and get answers from a bunch of people instead of just talking to us because we obviously know nothing. Yeah. So I hope we see you on the next episode. And y'all have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.